Hi everyone, this is Mukesh and in this video, we'll be deploying a .NET 8 Web API to AWS Elastic Beanstalk. We'll further discuss on the advantages AWS Elastic Beanstalk offers over a traditional EC2 instance setup. This entire deployment would take you just under 10 minutes to get your .NET 8 Web API up and running. If you are new here, I make videos on .NET, AWS and related stack. I'll be soon starting a .NET 8 series on this YouTube channel where I will cover everything you need to know to get started with .NET backend development. This will also include supporting articles and GitHub repositories. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever I post new content. That's it. This video is part of my ongoing .NET on AWS series and thanks to AWS for sponsoring this video. You can grab a free $25 AWS credit by using the link in the description of this video. This should help you get started with exploring AWS. Let's understand the problem statement. Deploying and managing applications in the cloud can be a complex and time-consuming task, especially when dealing with infrastructure and scaling requirements. To deploy applications into AWS, traditionally a developer would need to configure and manage EC2 instances, set up load balancers, and handle auto-scaling groups, security, and so many other parameters. This process is not only challenging, but also very prone to human errors, leading to downtime and a poor user experience. Furthermore, as the application grows and the traffic increases, managing scalability becomes even more critical. Ensuring that the application can handle traffic efficiently requires constant monitoring and adjustments to the infrastructure, which adds on to the complexity. Although it's understood that provisioning EC2 instances manually and doing all the clicking around is not always the ideal path you would want to take, it's also very important to know how each and every component fits in together in a traditional EC2 instance setup. This includes your VPC setup, security group, auto-scaling, load balancers, and so many other things. So if you want me to make a video where we'll set up a EC2 instances from scratch and get our .NET application deployed via SSH, do let me know in the comment section below. So as mentioned earlier, these are the challenges you would face as a developer or a team. It can be also that your team's DevOps capacity is quite limited and you want a more automated and managed way to handle deployments. AWS Elastic Beanstalk addresses these challenges by building an abstraction layer on top of your EC2 instances. It provides a platform that simplifies deployment and management of your .NET applications. With Elastic Beanstalk, we can just focus on writing the code while AWS handles the provisioning and scaling of the infrastructure. So Beanstalk automatically manages the deployment from capacity provisioning, load balancing, auto-scaling of the application and health monitoring. This automation reduces the complexity of the deployment significantly and ensures that your applications can scale seamlessly to meet the traffic demands. By using Elastic Beanstalk, developers can deploy their .NET applications faster, improve the application availability and scale their applications more efficiently, ultimately providing a better experience for the users. So how does this all work in the background? When we create a new AWS Beanstalk application, it initially asks us for a set of related parameters, which we'll see in the upcoming section. Now, based on your input, Beanstalk will prepare a CloudFormation template. So what are CloudFormation templates? These are AWS's internal infrastructure as code tool. Now this templates would contain definition of resources like EC2 instance, IAM policies, auto scale groups, and all the other resources that is needed to deploy your application. I'll be showing this to you when we create our first Beanstalk application in a while. So once these resources are provisioned, we'll be able to deploy our .NET application directly from Visual Studio. Note that for this demonstration, we'll be publishing a self-contained .NET 8 web API to the cloud using AWS Beanstalk. Let's also go through a few concepts around this AWS service like application, environment, versioning, tiles, and integration. In Elastic Beanstalk, an application represents your web application or API. This is the layer your end user will be interacting with. So each of these environments that we created consists of an application version, configuration settings, and AWS resources such as EC2 instances, load balancers, and everything that is necessary to run your application. You'll also be able to manage different versions of your application using AWS Beanstalk. Also, it's important to note that Elastic Beanstalk seamlessly integrates with other AWS services such as RDS for database management, S3 for object storage, and CloudWatch for logging. So this provides a comprehensive platform for deploying and running your applications without much hassle. Talking about pricing, there is no additional cost for the service since it helps us ease the process of provisioning other resources. You will be only charged for the resources that are provisioned by your AWS Elastic Beanstalk environment, like EC2 instances or any other related database services and resources. You'll also be able to keep track of each and every deployed resource by viewing the CloudFormation stack. We will be exploring this in a later section of the video. 
So now that we have some understanding of the concepts, let's learn more by actually creating an AWS Elastic Beanstalk application and environment. Log into your AWS Management Console and search for Elastic Beanstalk. Open up the service. Here, click on create a new application. So this is where you have to provide all your required configuration. Let's explore this. First up, the environment tier. It has to be set to web server, as we'll be deploying a .NET 8 web API. But if you're working with a long running background tasks, worker environment will be more suitable for your use case. I'll give my application name as demo and set the environment name as development. Let's leave the domain value as blank so that AWS generates a random domain name for us. So coming to the platform section, we'll have a managed platform. In the platform dropdown, let's select .NET Core on Linux. And for the branch, let's select .NET 6 running on 64-bit Amazon Linux 2023. As of this video, Beanstalk by default supports .NET 6. But if we choose to build a self-contained .NET application, even .NET 8 will run fine in this platform. We'll keep the platform version as the latest, that is 3.0.5. Now, in the application code section, you can also choose to upload the zip of your .NET application. But for now, let's select sample application. As mentioned earlier, our application will be deployed directly from Visual Studio, which we'll look into later on. For the presets, let's stick to single instance. Once that is done, click on next. In this next stage, we'll have to define IAM rules with which Beanstalk will be able to manage our resources and environment. Let's create a new service role. Click on create and use new service role. I'll name it demo role. Now in the next section, you can choose to create a new key pair for your EC2. So this is basically if you want to SSH into the EC2 instance. As this is not in the scope of our demonstration, I'll be skipping this part. Now coming to the instance profile, we'll have to create a new role. So for this, let me open up IAM. Click on roles. Create a new role. Let's select AWS service. And in the use case, we'll set EC2. Keep the default use case and click on next. So in this next screen, we'll have to attach the Elastic Beanstalk web tire permissions. So for this, select for Elastic Beanstalk and select the web tire permissions. Once that is selected, click on next. I'll name this role as EB role. I'll leave everything as it is and click on create role. So once your role is created, let's switch back to our Elastic Beanstalk selection screen. And I'll click on refresh. So once that is refreshed, you'll be able to see our new role created here. So let's select it, which is EB role and click on next. In this next stage comes the networking part. Here we'll select the default VPC that's already available on your AWS account. However, it is recommended that you create a new custom VPC for your actual production application. I'll select the default and in the instance settings, let's assign a public IP address to our EC2 instance. And make sure that you are selecting all the instance subnets. We will not touch the database section as we do not need this in our application. However, if you decide to connect your application to a RDS database instance, you will have to configure this section as well. We'll keep everything to the default and click on next. In the next section, you'll have to configure your instances. But for now, you can keep everything as a default. So this includes your root volume, which is already set by default to AGB and also your auto scaling groups, which are already pre-configured. Just for your information, here is where you'll have to select your uh, instance types. So by default, we are selecting t2.small, which is more than enough for your demonstration. So with everything set to default, I'll click on next. Finally comes the configuration for your monitoring and logging. Here also we'll keep everything as a default. In this section, you can configure your monitoring and logging. You can keep this section untouched as well. First part is the health monitoring. I will actually keep everything to the default. At the end of your screen comes the environment variable section. So here, let me add a new environment variable, which is ASP.NET Core environment. And I'll set the value as development. So why am I doing this? It is mainly to ensure that we'll be able to access the Swagger URL of our ASP.NET Core web API as soon as we have deployed it. So with all these things done, click on next. Finally, you can review all your changes and click on submit. So once that is submitted, Elastic Beanstalk will start to provision your resources and it'll take a couple of minutes. Meanwhile, if you scroll down in the event section, you'll get real-time notifications of all the resources that are being provisioned. For example, it has already created security groups and is working with S3 as well. 
I will fast forward to the part where the resource provisioning is completed. As you can see, the instance setup has completed and the health of the Beanstalk application is set to OK. You'll also be able to see the URL of the application. Let's open it up. So this is the default application that has been deployed. In the next section, we'll be deploying a .NET 8 web API using Visual Studio. As I've already mentioned, all this is managed in the background with the help of CloudFormation templates and stack. Let's see how that section works. So let me search for CloudFormation. I'll open up the service. So here is our template for the Beanstalk application that we just created. Let me open it up and click on resources. Here you can see all the resources that are associated with the Beanstalk application, like auto scaling group, configuration, security groups, and so on. So in this way, you'll be able to manage your resources together in a single view. Now we'll switch over to Visual Studio, create our new .NET Web API, and learn how to deploy to AWS Beanstalk using Visual Studio. In Visual Studio, let's create a new project. We'll select ASP.NET Core Web API. I'll name the project as Bean Demo. Click on Next. We'll set the framework to 8.0 and keep everything as the default. I'll just go to program.cs and do some minor cleanup. So here I'll just remove the default weather forecast API endpoints and clean it up. And I'll just add a new hello world get endpoint. So as you can see, we are going to keep the application as simple as possible. So we have the entire application that is running on .NET 8, which has a single minimal endpoint, which is at the root of the application, which returns a message hello world from AWS Beanstalk. With that done, let's build the application. So before you proceed, make sure that you have installed AWS Toolkit on your machine. So for this, go to extensions, Manage Extensions and here search and install for AWS Toolkit. I already have it installed on my Visual Studio instance. So this is what you will have to install in your Visual Studio. So once that is installed, let's close this up and right click the project. So here we'll have to select Publish to AWS. So I have already configured my AWS Toolkit to connect to my AWS account you'll already be seeing the environment that you had created in AWS Beanstalk, which is development. So let's click on it and click on publish. We'll disable this warning and click on yes. Now Visual Studio will start publishing your .NET 8 web application in a self-contained way. This is only because AWS Beanstalk currently doesn't support .NET 8. Rather, it supports only up to .NET 6. So to overcome this, we'll have to do a self-contained publish. And once the publishing part is done, Visual Studio attempts to upload your artifact to S3. And finally, the uploaded artifact is going to be linked to your AWS Beanstalk application and is going to be restarted. And within a matter of minutes, your .NET 8 Web API should be already deployed to your AWS Beanstalk application. Let's minimize Visual Studio and open up the browser. As you can see, the environment is also healthy now. Let's open up the URL one more time. This time, you can see the hello world message directly from our .NET 8 web API. So this is how simple it is to actually publish a .NET 8 application into a managed instance on the cloud. It barely took us under five minutes to get the entire application up and running. You can also navigate to the Swagger URL to check this. And as expected, we can see our Swagger URL with the single minimal endpoint. Let me try it out, click on execute, the application is returning the expected response. Now comes the question, when to use Elastic Beanstalk and when not to. If you want an application deployed super fast, choose Beanstalk. Elastic Beanstalk simplifies the deployment process, making it easy to deploy your applications quickly. This is especially useful for projects with tight deadlines and frequent updates. Elastic Beanstalk also can automatically scale your application based on traffic, ensuring that your application remains responsive under various load conditions. So this makes it ideal for applications with unpredictable traffic patterns. So it can also help to optimize your cost by automatically scaling the resources down based on demand. So you will have to pay only for the resources you use, making it a very cost optimized solution. While Elastic Beanstalk offers many benefits, it may not be suitable for every applications or use case. For example, if your application requires a highly customizable or complex architecture, Elastic Beanstalk's automated deployment and management may not provide enough flexibility to you.
In such cases, using other AWS services like EC2, ECS or EKS directly may be more appropriate. Elastic Beanstalk abstracts away most of the underlying infrastructure details, which can be limiting if your application requires special configurations or customizations. If you require fine-grained control over the underlying resources such as networking configurations, instance types or auto-scaling policies, you may find Elastic Beanstalk's automated management somewhat restrictive. With that said, we have reached the end of our demonstration. Once you're done with the learning part, make sure you have destroyed all the resources. This will ensure that your AWS builds are under control. For this, let's switch back to Elastic Beanstalk and click on Applications. Here, let's select our application and click on Actions. Here, just click on Delete Applications and type in the name of your application, which is Demo in our case, and click on Delete. So this will start deleting your application as well as the environments which includes all the other related AWS resources like the EC2 instances and all the related security groups and auto-scaling groups. I'll be soon starting a .NET 8 series on this YouTube channel and my blog which you probably don't want to miss. If you like this piece of content, do hit on the like button and make sure you have subscribed to my channel. Apart from that, I also wanted to share an update related to my blog which I'm rebuilding from scratch. This is written on Astro Framework with TribeScript and a lot of Tailwind. So my main idea was to move away from WordPress as I found it very bloated and was not able to customize it like I wanted to. It took me almost like a couple of weeks to learn the basics of Astro, which I think is pretty cool in terms of performance. The development part is almost completed for this project and I have to complete my existing article migrations. So soon after that is completed, I'll be starting the .NET 8 series. So guys, thanks for the time. I hope you liked this video. In the next video of this series, we'll discuss about AWS Code Pipeline and implementing CI/CD for your .NET application using it. Until then, thanks everyone.